Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. Today we've got the Fly Sky Nirvana. I've been looking forward to getting this for a long time. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we've got the Nirvana NV14 from Fly Sky to look at. I'm just this is the box it comes in, very nicely boxed. Let's just take it out of the box. It's really tight to get out of here for some reason. There we go. So in the box, this is what you get. You get a very nice cover that goes over the top. You get some Nirvana stickers, Fly Sky stickers, telling you how to put your batteries in. And inside here you get the transmitter and a box of accessories. So let me just show you what comes in the accessory box. So you get a cable to go from transmitter to transmitter in case you want to do buddy boxing. You get a USB cable, a quick start guide, and you get two receivers with it. So you get one receiver which is more for which is for a bigger drone, say a five inch drone. Let's turn that out and show it you. So that's the bigger receiver. Comes with a cable and three antennas. You actually get a spare antenna, which is good. You then get The smaller antenna for your micros. And then in here, you get the adapters that I'll show you in a minute that go on the back of the set so you can use modules in the back. So you get all of them in the box, and here's the transmitter. Comes with this case that goes over the top. To remove the case, Pull it at the front, you can see it's like a smoked perspex case, and here's your transmitter. So, let's just have a quick look over the transmitter. So you've got three position switch at the back there, three position switch there, momentary switch, and momentary switch. So these are designed, if you put your fingers on there and you fly, thumbs on top, you can get to these switches without taking your fingers off the gimbals. Really nice design. You've also got these mountings here, so these are to hold your hands on or if you fly in like I do pinch. Put your, you can put your fingers there and you can still easily get to your switches. So it's really well thought out. Momentary switch there, two position switch there, three and a two. And these, believe it or not, are your auxil auxiliary channels and this is what you use as sliders, they would have been sliders on the old type transmitters feel very very smooth so the one thing I'll say straight away, in your hand this thing feels incredible it's more weightier than you're probably going to imagine it is, it's quite weighty actually, there's quite a lot of weight here but it feels quality there's no flex, no movement it's just really nice so your trainer port plugs in there and your USB is there on the top, the trainer there, and on the back, you have your antenna. So in the back of the set here is where you plug, so this would plug in like that. And then that one goes on there, and you use the included four screws, which come in this bag and then you can fit onto the back, you can fit your module. So let's just have a look at that. Two, two buttons to turn it on. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle warning. I don't know how well you can see the screen in here because there's a bit of glare. But So it's a touch screen. So similar operation to all OpenTX transmitters. If you hit that button there, you've got your model select, your monitor, your reset, your statistics and about. In here you've got how you, this is how you set your model up. 
So this is the first model screen that you normally see. So you set your model name, etc, etc. But if you go down here, like on a Tyrannis, you'd normally have your Tyrannis settings here, D8, D16, etc. Here you've got PWM Plus and so forth. Sorry, I've got the timer on too low, I think. Give it on three seconds. PWM, PPM, PPM Plus. So that's where you bind, and then to bind, simply click it there. Now the one thing that I was a bit disappointed with, it doesn't come with a stylus, which I found strange, unless I can't find it. Sorry, just going to turn it off a minute. Let's have a look around the back. So it doesn't come with a stylus. The batteries go in here. So it takes, these are 18650s, but the, I've got in here 25, uh, 2200 I think. Yeah. Samsung's, but just to show you, if you don't have that battery in, Welcome to Open TX. it will still power up. So the reason they do that is, so you can swap your battery. So it's using the both batteries simply to give you more, not more power, but more milliamp hours. So longer time. So you, you can unscrew that and swap that in mid-flight if you wanted. If you had the battery running low and you're at the field. And I think it's a great design to be honest. So I prefer these battery catches to the ones on the TX Lite. The twist on these are proper screw on ones. They just feel much better, much better to do. They feel much tighter when they go on. They're not gonna pop off on you. They're really nice. One thing I should have showed you straight away is, this is your bracket to hold your lanyard, but there's two screws on there. You have to, if you get into DFU mode, there's a button inside the hole behind the screw. So to enter DFU mode, you've gotta take this off, press that button. And then also the SD card is mounted underneath here so you need to do that to set it up so when you're setting it up you will need to remove this if you want to do a software update and update your card and so forth so you must take this off so this is the banggood version there's two versions available there's the underground fpv it's still an underground fpv product and the banggood one the banggood one comes with open tx not the version that underground fpv did so this is the, it, if you like, this is the fuller version of OpenTX, more familiar to OpenTX users, whereas the underground FPV one is more modified for quads, if you like. I prefer this version because I wanted the full, because I want to fly planes and, and other things on this, so for me it was better. What I will say is, on this one, if you look in the top corner, I don't know if you can see that very well in here, there's a clock. So the clock's, as you can see, not set at the right time. The clock won't adjust because there's no adjustment in the settings. You have to do the upgrade, the software firmware upgrade to get that in. They've, they've left it out originally. Once you put it in, you can adjust the clock. I haven't done it yet. I haven't done anything bar open. Let's have a quick look at it. You can adjust the time the screen stays on. I've got mine on ridiculously low. It's far too low. In fact, I'll just show you. So if you go into radio settings, and you go down to backlight, Let's turn that to, let's knock that up, just for the purpose of the video, to 30. Now, I don't think that actually takes effect if you turn it on and off. We'll see. Off and on, should I say. So, the gimbals are hot, a hall effect. These are digital, so there's no analogue in here at all. This is true digital hall effect gimbals, which is which are totally different to the ones that are on the Tyrannis. It feels really nice. There's, I've had a lot. Of, I've heard a lot of people saying videos that the sticks don't have enough tension. They feel fine to me, to be honest. They're not maybe as springy as I'd like, but they feel absolutely fine for flying. I have no issue with them whatsoever. So as you can see on the back, it's just, it's very well made. There's a lot of so if you want to take the back off, you're going to take all these screws out. But you might think it's overkill on screws, but what it's giving is this rigidity. It's really rigid in your hand. This is one of the one of these transmitters that is difficult to video because you're not going to see what it's like until you actually see it live in person, hold it in your hand. It's definitely 
need to be that because I can recommend a transmitter all day long but it might not feel right to you. What I can tell you about this, I've got, I own about 15 or 16 transmitters. This is the nicest feeling transmitter I've got for flying with because if I was flying thumbs on top, which I do sometimes, it's fine. If I'm flying finger and thumb, it's fine. It feels as comfortable doing either. I love the build quality. I love the touch screen. The only thing I'm disappointed is you don't get a stylus, which I find a little bit bizarre. Apart from that, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It really is nice. To adjust your trims, it's very simple. Trim control for either trim side center. here. Trim center. It really is simple to use. And as I say, it really is nice. The, the sticks feel nice. The switches feel nice. The screen's nice. You can adjust the brightness on the screen. I've got mine about mid. But you can adjust the brightness on the screen. Again, so like everything else, it's not that great to see outdoors. Battery life, that I can't tell you because I've only just got it. I'm going to do another video shortly on this. It'll be when I've bound this to a model and I'm going to compare it to the X-Lite. And I'll also, at that point, know better about the battery life on it. Because I'd imagine it's going to use quite, I'd imagine the battery life's not going to be, because the colour screen obviously is much more power consuming than a monotone one, so, monochrome screen should I say, so, yeah. I recommend this, highly. I paid 133 for it from Banggood, and then I think the batteries were 6 or 7 quid, I already had a charger that did 18650s, so I didn't have to buy a charger. But all in all, I think it's an absolutely wonderful transmitter. And I don't think you'd be disappointed if you bought one. It's definitely for me been worth the wait. I'm just now going to get it, but the wind is up as normal, so I can't get it. I can't go flying at the minute. But like I said, I'll post another video shortly comparing this to the X Lite because this is its main competitor. The X Lite, I will tell you, is much smaller than this. You can probably get some size comparison from my hand. It's not small. It's not a small transmitter. It's much bigger than the X Lite. It's much heavier than the X Lite as well. There's quite a bit of weight here. Probably because of all the things I've had and all this mess will work. And the heat treated chrome looks amazing on the switches and the stick ends. You can see the stick ends look fantastic. It's just the, the finish is incredible. So I think it's brilliant value, especially when it comes with two receivers. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments and I'll try to help you the best I can, but I haven't had it very long and I'll be back shortly with another video comparing this to the X-Lite. Oh, I'll have that bound by then and I'll also get some flight footage of me flying something with it. So, thanks very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please hit the like button and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.